Okay, so just scrying the angelic name Boreov, or perhaps divine name. And just once again, um, being told to assume the God form in whichever way is comfortable. And so having just scribed this name Iman, Iman beforehand, um, instead what I am feeling is just this all around suffusion of myself within every, within everything else. So it's like there's this boundarylessness between myself and everything else. So this is something that has been described by people who have taking, taken MDMA as an example. But it's very much an energetic feeling. But it's like I'm seeing myself like fully integrated and you know my eyes are like trying to do a 360 in my head right now of the entire world and the entire universe. And it's as if I'm seeing myself, depending on where I focus my attention, either here or way in deep space at the Voyager 1 uh, <coughs> probe, or, you know, out in distant galaxies, so on and so forth. <coughs> So, this feeling is sort of both claustrophobic, but also very expansive at the same time, obviously. It's a very intimate feeling. And at times I'm like taking the view of something much smaller, such as an ant or a microbe, and at other times I'm taking in the vastness of, of a star, for example. <clears throat> including those types that are much larger than ours, and I forget what they're called. <laughs> so anyway, it's very, it feels very right. And it feels, um, it, to not put too fine a point on it, it feels like this is, This is the feeling of oneness with God, except like in a waking sense, right? So when I scry the Aether of Lil, the sense is very much, I'm up in heaven. I am like way up, you know, stratosphere idea. It conceptually, you can think of it like that. But the very much like the the entirety of all kind of concepts um, all at once, right? And everything perfectly equidistant from a center. And the center is basically the heart of God, right? And everything, all the opposites are sort of like, in a lot of ways, very much equidistant and well-placed and you could even like add many dimensions if you have a third thing that is the higher category of the other two of any two sets. So for example, you know, hot and cold, they're both ha are a subset of temperature and temperature is a subset of physics, for example, heat energy and energy is a subset of energy matter and so on and so forth. But regardless, all those opposites are well balanced. And um, if you keep going up in higher and higher dimensions, they're even more and more well balanced, as it were. Or let's put it this way, they're in a higher order. Whereas this experience, so that's the experience that I have like of Lil or of Lil of Lil or whatever the case may be. But this is very much the experience of taking it back from concepts for a second. This is very experiential. And it's like I can feel myself sort of moving this hand and the hand is just kind of like this shadow within this larger um, 
it's it's almost as if my hand is moving through very dense fog. It's almost like this milky fog, right? But there's this entire light that is sort of like this diffused light of all things in the universe. So in working my way back to good health, um, one of the things I was told, and after the pause in Josiah, one of the things I was told to work on was to work with the Archangel Michael. So it's interesting, sort of the things that I had to do. And I was told, or the implication was there needed to be a little bit of inversion and rebellion in order to get the fullness of this experience with Michael. And interestingly enough, that is continuing a little bit right now. But I was told at any rate to imagine Michael's sword as a long beam of light and to sort of try to understand how that same beam of light, which technically doesn't exist until it sort of meets the observer, right? Which is a very like mind blowing concept, but how does it sort of exist both across space and time and how does it move, right? According to how does it get refracted, reflected, all of these things. If you're going from a white beam, which is technically multiple beam, you know, frequencies of light, but, and it occurred to me that it was the heart and the heart. And in order to really get to know that nature of light, that single emanation from God, you needed to understand the nature of the heart that the light was interacting with. Right. And so with all of that, I realized that, um, or I was shown, uh, that all of this light that is emanating from the divine is interacting with all of, you know, all of matter everywhere, but more importantly, the hearts of all observers everywhere. And so from that, you can see that there's this divine, um, there's a little bit of a skew, an overall collective skew that results because any individual beam of light, people are going to come at it with their own point of view and their own experience and stuff like that. And collectively, we're all, as people, experiencing things due to us. And if you wanted to say, well, what if we include another intelligent species such as dolphins or elephants? They're also having their own skew. And we can't, it's not enough to just say, well, they'll have that because we all have the skew of being mammals, for example, right? But the truth is, is that fundamentally the skew is just the skew of existence. Um, but also that means so many different things to different people just because of the different, the, the variety of, of experiences that we have. So I'm bringing all of this up to say that when you think of that, it's like, imagine all of those things, if you could sort of aggregate them into a single skew, you know, sort of twirling around or whatever the case may be, making it really difficult for all of us to align our perspectives and to be with the divine in a very um, simple place, then the, I, the you, if you could imagine what it's like right now, it's like I'm experiencing that directly. Um, but rather, instead of like, experiencing the skew instead it's this the the potential for everything to be unskewed and all of the um biases not necessarily to be completely accounted for or fixed or anything like that let's take that language out but instead harmonized right our our skews are there we accept them we acknowledge all of that but they're harmonized with one another and that allows for a greater light and greater possibilities. Our hearts all being able to interact differently with each other in a new and refreshing, a new heaven and a new earth way, very literally. So, so that's the first thing, right? Is okay, we got the, the feeling here and then we have this overall sense of what can be done. And so that's the potential. And now I'm feeling like my energy sort of rise up. So before it was like energy kind of coming down and then coming back up. But now it's just sort of coming up. 
and it's very much a floaty feeling so I'm feeling like I'm floating within this but there's this bright kind of light kind of appearing right about here coming down to my eyes roughly and it's kind of coming down coming down and it is this feminine figure and um it's reminding me of the way Chris Bledsoe has described the lady and she's just kind of coming down in a very Marian-like pose. And she's telling me that hers is the most blessed of the nine angels about the circumference. And she's commenting briefly on Iman or Amon as the first and then the seven archangels are sort of all um she's sort of saying liken it somewhat to the Ogduad. she's saying when i do research for this that it'll all be clear but liken it somewhat to that although not entirely she's saying but hers is the most blessed because hers is this feminine beginning. And she's saying to go ahead and research a certain episode of the Secret History of Western Esotericism podcast to have more commentary on this before I post it. And she's saying it's okay to just put it off till tomorrow. But that this idea of coming forth from the feminine, right, this unbound potential this is very special, and this is something that, um, you know, if you, for example, the first reproduction that any species does is much more like a feminine reproduction, right? Creating another version and letting that thing split off, you know, carrying it carrying the potential for this other life, continuing to help it grow and nurture, and then it's, it splits off. Um, and that can largely be thought of as feminine, right? A sort of precursor to the actual womb. But also she's just mentioning that, you know, this divine... Um, benevolence or potentiality that has allowed, you know, life to continue, right? Instead of Earth being a dead planet, life continues, and it's continued for billions of years. She's saying that this is something that the hearts of everybody need to, needs to focus on, and, or need to focus on, and that it's okay to go through the things you're going through, basically. And that to just go through it, right? Go through the things, go through the, through the feelings that we have, and then just recognize, to go through them, acknowledge them, honor them, but not past the date, as it were, or the time, or the hour, she's saying, is a better way of saying it. To honor your feelings, not pat, but not past the hour at which you are done with them, right? And you'll know the difference if your heart is feeling hard. And if it's feeling hard, then it's time to let it go. You realize... That's the time, and the easiest way to make that switch is to say that feeling has now hardened into a thought, and a thought is just something you can let go of. Okay. So I'm trying to see what else. And, and I think that's it. So um, she is telling me, advising me to just... Um, take it relatively easy tonight, sort of put the finishing touches on this work, 
and then um, make the three videos for tomorrow. And then that'll be it for a bit uh, to just relax. And then maybe not until Leo season proper uh, to begin posting again there. But thus ends the vision.